10.2, here we go. Rather than write everything on the screen from scratch, I've gone ahead and got much of what we're going to cover written out just to save time. Uh, PDFs of all the notes are posted, so follow along with me and let's see if we can learn a little bit about vectors. Before we talk about vectors, though, I want to introduce a word to you. So a scalar is simply a number, and we'll talk in a little bit about why we want to call numbers scalars and not just numbers anymore. It's the same thing. We're just learning some more language. So scalars, numbers, can be used to describe things like uh, maybe length or um, area, um, mass, temperature. You get the point, right? There's lots of things that you can describe with scalars. Uh, the word magnitude, by the way, just means uh, length or it can mean size, length or size, depending on context. So I'm going to use the word uh, scalar and magnitude uh, in the rest of the lecture and throughout the semester, and I just want you to know what that means. Okay, well today we're interested in studying vectors. And some of you have seen vectors in physics and engineering, that's great. We're going to Focus today largely on the mathematics of vectors, visualizing, understanding, working with them. So, oops, I need to be on pencil. A vector is a quantity having both magnitude, which means size or length, so magnitude and direction. And two classic examples that you're familiar with would be velocity and force. Uh, these are represented by vectors because your velocity is not just how fast you're going it's also the direction you're going all right so we're going to restrict our attention to two-dimensional and three-dimensional vectors and the nice thing about those is they can be visualized as simply arrows all right so let's uh, let's get some green here so here in two space if i draw an arrow i'm representing uh, the magnitude is the length and then the direction is just the slope of that vector. So there's a vector, there's a different vector, there's a vector. If I want to go over to R3, same thing. Here's a vector in R3, uh, here's a vector. Again, the length of the vector is capturing the magnitude and then the direction, which way it's pointing, uh, is telling you the direction of the vector. All right, a couple of uh, terminology that we'll use. So the point if it, each vector has a point at its tail and a point at its head, and so the point where the tail of the vector lies is called the initial point. I'm going to switch colors. I don't really like writing in, uh, in orange. The point on which the head of the vector lies is called the terminal point. So the initial point is right here of this vector. The terminal point is right there. These are points in space. All right, now, here's the deal. So vectors that have the same length and the same direction, well, they're the same vector because vectors are completely described by their length and their direction. So if they have the same length, same direction, they are called equivalent. And what I want you to think about equivalent vectors is that they're actually exactly the same vector. So let me show you. So if I draw this vector, let's, uh, there we go. And there it is, I fixed its length, I fixed its direction. And uh, I can now copy this, and I can paste a copy over there. I have it, when I move it around, as long as I don't change the direction, which I'm not, even though I'm changing where it's located, I'm not changing the direction or the length. And so those two vectors are, in fact, equivalent. And so is, are those, those three are all equivalent. I can just keep pasting copies of this thing as much as I want. All right, so all of these vectors are equivalent because they're pointing in the same direction, and they have the same length. Okay, so you can float vectors visually wherever you want, but it's going to be convenient for us to put either their tail or their head at all the same point. And we're going to usually put their tail at the same point. And so a vector is called in standard position, meaning of all the places that you could float it, there's one place where we sort of like to put it. Standard position when its tail is placed at the origin. So if I want to go back to this example, this one, when I put it where the tail is at the origin, <laughs> I just noticed my grid is off. That's hilarious. Let's fix that. 
uh, so we can move that line right there there we go and then we can put this vector now it's tails at the origin so it's this one is the one that's in standard position because its tail is at the origin all right so a couple of things uh, maybe we'll just do some examples so there's a vector in standard position here's a different vector in standard position there's yet another vector in standard position you can float copies of these all over the screen but their tail placed at the origin is when the vector is in standard position I want to mention to you the zero vector the zero vector sort of somehow uh, is not really a vector but we're gonna uh, add it to the set of vectors because it ha doesn't have any magnitude or direction and we said that vectors have both magnitude and direction <laughs> Uh, but we're going to add a special vector called the zero vector and I want you to think about the zero vector as just a point and so you can sort of see the zero vector as just the origin you could put it wherever you want but standard position means the tail is at the uh, the origin and so I'll always think about the zero vector is just the origin alright so here's the deal once we've put our vector in standard position and again, visually, you can. It makes no difference where you float it, so it doesn't matter. Once you've put your vector in standard position, we need only to describe its terminal point. You know where the tail is. The tail is here. The only information to figure out its length and direction that you need is where does the vector actually end. And so uh, I've got a picture here. This particular vector is described entirely by its terminal point. And so... Uh, we're, we're going to use that to write down what's called the component form of V. Now I'm introducing several things at once here. So V is going to be my vector. What does the bar mean? The little hat here is what we're going to write to indicate that something is a vector and not a scalar. So all V hat here, V arrow is, is just saying it's a vector and the component form of V uh, is when you simply write down the coordinates of the terminal point. What are these wedgy things? Well, the wedgy thing, uh, not not wedgy things. Uh, <laughs> what are these angle brackets? The angle brackets are indicating again that this is a vector. So even though the point a1, a2, a3, that's a point in three space. And the vector a1, a2, and a3, they are giving you exactly the same information, right? Same information. They are technically different. This you visualize as the point right there in space. That's it. Whereas this you visualize as the vector going from the origin to the point. So same information, same numbers, but different objects. So that's a lot to swallow. Let's go back and just review what we said. So we said, look, when you've put a vector in standard position, that means its tail is at the origin, then you can write down what's called the component form of your vector. And the component form, you put brackets around it, angle brackets around it, and you just write down the coordinates of the head of the vector. And so as I've written here, the component form uh, always assumes that you're in standard position. And so that brings up a very natural question and, and or actually yeah so it, it does raise a question but before we do that let's do this example because I already had it written down so let, let's just sketch this vector V here I've given you the component form you know you're going to start at the origin and you're going to go out one on the x-axis minus two on the y-axis and then up one on the z-axis and so it's going to look uh, something like that and you can sort of piece it in and then do that so there's how you can visualize this vector V given the component form. Okay, back to the question. How do we find the component form of a vector that's not in standard position? What if my vector is floating out here somewhere? And the idea is that you simply compute head minus tail. That's what I want you to keep in your mind, okay? The answer to this question, how do you find the component form of a vector that's not in standard position? is simply head minus tail. I'm going to erase the circle. So let's do an example of this and then we'll end this video in just a moment. So, uh, if I want to find the component form of the vector PQ where I'm indicating it's a vector with the hat on top, I'm telling you that the 
initial point, the tail, is this point P, and then the terminal point, the head, is this point Q. Okay, so I want to find the component form. Well, let's go ahead and realize from the beginning that PQ, as it's written, is not in standard position. So here, P is uh, 1, negative 2. So there's P down here, and Q is 0, 2. So this vector actually looks like that, not in standard position at all. But we said the answer to finding the component form when a vector is not in standard position is to use what's called head minus tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about each component, and I'm simply going to take the component for the head, which is Q, 0, and I'm at, whoa, 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 we just shot forward. Man, I hope I didn't make anybody sick with that. Apologies. I'm going to take, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the component of the head, which is Q, so 0, and I'm going to subtract the component, the same component of the tail, which is 1, so 0 minus 1. And then I'm going to write down 2 from the head minus, minus 2 from the tail. And the, that's it. So this becomes the vector negative 1, 4. And so now if I go here, I go negative 1 on the x-axis, and then I go up 4 on the y-axis. And you can see that, sure enough, it's the same vector, same length, same direction. That's the component form of the uh, vector PQ even though I wasn't given PQ in standard position. All right, last thing for this video. Uh, if you want to write down the component form of the zero vector, it's just either 0, 0 in R2 or 0, 0, 0 in R3.